Zachary in North Carolina is a deist and has some questions. Uh, Zachary, you are on the line with Jimmy and Matt. Hey, Zachary. Hey, how are you guys? Just fine. Excited or excitable? Yeah. <laughs> what? Did you? The floor is yours, Zachary. Uh, I didn't know you got. Uh, oh, I mean, I'm doing good. good. I've never been on a show like this before, so I'm not necessarily how uh, the protocol goes. So I apologize. Don't apologize. Just uh, just present your topic, and we'll have questions. And it sounds like you have questions, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. So I recently deconverted from Christianity after doing a deep dive study into the actual moral character and the philosophical implications about what the Bible has to say on like hell, on rape, on all of these things. And I was wholly unconvinced that a perfect loving God couldn't possibly use the worst, most tragic parts of human experience in order to punish people. But I um, mean, Obviously, coming from that background, I have a lot of friends, and including my wife, who is still a Christian. So I was wondering, do you guys have any good arguments or anything like that that would help maybe like convince them or at least show them that you shouldn't just trust what God says just because he's God? Instead, any way to possibly get them to actually examine what the Bible says from like a logical, coherent perspective? On these things wild I, I, it it's wow wild um so i figured uh when we got a deist to call in maybe we'd finally get somebody who could give us some thoughts on justifying deism but but now you're basically saying how do you convince Christians to give up Christianity? At least to get them to look at it, any arguments or anything like that that you have. I mean, this is really weird I, I could, because it's like you're basically saying, please describe what you've been doing for 20 years on every show. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was just wondering because I'm quite new to this and I had no idea what any of the actual like arguments were or whatnot, but I mean, I can try what, and justify what, theism. However, I, what convinced you to no longer be a Christian? Uh, the fact that God has allowed rape, um, used rape as a punishment, uh, killed infants, punished innocent people. I think you um, misheard the question. For the crime of others. Right. Did, Matt, you asked what convinced uh, Zachary to be a Christian, not to leave, no. right? Oh, no, I, I asked misheard. him what convinced him to not be a Christian. Okay. My bad. So basically you're saying the God of the Bible you find repugnant. Absolutely, yes. Does that mean he doesn't exist? I would say that at least the conception of the God of the Bible does not exist now. So you're saying, wow, the conception of the God of the Bible doesn't exist because you don't like what he supposedly has done? What difference does because you being convinced? Claims, what, what, how? What difference does you being convinced make to whether or not somebody exists? Because the moral character of the God of the Bible specifically says that He is all good, He is benevolent, He is. Where does it say that? Loving. Where does it say that? You know what? That's good. I haven't actually thought about that. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, the Bible doesn't mention the omnis at all. Those are inferences from kind of poetic passages about God being all good or whatever. 
Um, but also in Isaiah, it talks about, I'm the Lord thy God, I, uh, I create evil. Um, and mm -hmm. beyond that, whether or not you find something to be immoral doesn't mean that God was wrong about it. Okay. So what we've got here is you're saying you really don't like the character of God in the Bible. And because of that, you think it's perhaps, you know, good not to follow that being. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. But to then uh, try to, to spin that into, therefore, this being doesn't exist, I don't understand the justification for that. That's fair. Thank you for that. Yeah, I guess I have not thought about that point fully, so I appreciate that. Zachary, why are you a deist? Because, because of the moral character of the biblical God, I wasn't able to continue to justify following that God, but because of the ideas around the Big Bang, um, around the um, fine-tuning principles of the universe, around these things, I couldn't come to a better conclusion. Well, you started with a science that there was. You, you used a scientific term and then you followed it with this fine tuning thing, which is a religious assertion. It's not actually a demonstrated mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Yes. The universe works. Fine tuning implies a tuner. Uh, we, and we have no mm -hmm. more reason to believe in that as we do a creator that directed evolution. So what is it yeah, about the, the universe fine isn't fine tuned? Right. What what is it about the quote unquote fine tuning argument that you find uh, compelling enough to say you are a deist? Because the ideas of the universe um, that it isn't fine tuned and stuff like that doesn't make sense in just a simple naturalistic perspective because we continue to find order within the universe. And so I, I guess I'm taking some of these things from the arguments of Christianity, but I don't like the moral arguments of you, Christianity. You're entirely taking it so, from at least religious arguments because what you just said doesn't, isn't actually a meaningful thing to say. Yes, within the universe mm -hmm. and within the parameters of the universe, we continue to identify the way the universe seemingly consistently works. That does not mean you then yeah. add a person or an entity or a thinking agent that caused that to work. We don't have other universes to compare it to. For all we know, there is an unlimited number of universes with every type of physics that could be out there. And there may be some universes that don't work, or at least when we say work, we mean don't result in human life because it, the, the fine tuning argument seems to always have this very uh, egotistical humans were the goal sort of thing. Uh, but there may be universes mm -hmm. that because their physics don't work, there might be an infinite number and there might not. We don't know. We don't know whether or not there for sure is a multiverse. We don't know whether or not for sure this is the only one, but we don't have another universe to compare it to. So we can't say that this universe was made as opposed to the other universes which weren't made that way. So why take on a label and say, I am a deist because the fine tuning argument convinces me when the fine tuning argument is literally only assertion without evidence? That's very fair. I only just recently really? came out of Christianity, so I haven't had necessarily a lot of time to make through these points. So I appreciate that. That's fair enough. Sure. Um, there, giving... There's more to potential help because you talked about fine tuning because we find order. So yes, we do find order in the universe, isolated pockets of order. We also find disorder. We also find uh, entropy. Um, but does finding order mean in any way that that order was fine tuned for? I would say probably not. Okay. So what's left to demonstrate anything at all like fine tuning? Because fine tuning isn't just, hey, these two things seem to work well together. Fine tuning is these two things work well together because some mind made it so. 
And if we evolved to fit the universe that we inhabit, then there's no fine tuning involved at all. There is the tuning that occurs from natural selection where organisms that can survive and thrive in, a, in an environment do so, and the ones that can't don't, which is why some mutations result in species dying off or not being able to procreate, and some work towards the betterment. There's no evidence for any tuning at all. What there is is, if you imagine a, a sieve um, and sand going through it, the things that fit through the holes um, move on to the next level and the things that don't, don't. That's not tuning. That's a natural, entirely physical process. Okay. Yeah, Zachary. I mean, that's a great argument. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it to you this way, and, and then I think we'll move on, unless you have another argument that you find compelling for deism, and we'd be happy to go through you, that one with you as well. But imagine a universe that is fine-tuned, and imagine a universe that still exists but isn't fine-tuned. How would you tell the difference between those two universes? You probably would not be able to. Right, so why take the position that that it's you that have. there is a fine-tuner? That's the whole point is... I also can't tell whether this universe was or wasn't fine-tuned. I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm saying I don't see the evidence it was. That's why I'm an atheist instead of a deist. So if you can't yep. tell the difference, why okay. take a position? Not only that, uh, deism is very specifically the position of accepting that there's a God that does not intervene, that, that is undetectable. Yeah. And so a deistic God isn't necessarily tied to any sort of fine tuning and certainly isn't tied to fine tuning that you could detect. And every deist is claiming to have detected the undetectable, which makes their position while less offensive than most of the religion one, religious ones. Um, it makes it no more rational. As a matter of fact, it may be more irrational to have claimed to have falsified the unfalsifiable or detected the undetectable. Okay. Yeah, that was like um, one of the four uh, thoughts that I had about why there had to be a creator God, but I totally understand your positions, and I think they make a lot more sense given the evidence, so I appreciate that. Will the other three have oh. a similar response, or do you need, do you want to run through any of them? I could run through them right quick and see if you guys have any similar responses to them. Let's start with and the next not, one. Then I can pop off call. Yeah, what's number two? Yeah, because some of these maybe yeah. take more effort to debunk or to reply to. But go ahead with your next one. Yeah. Uh, the next one would be the beginning of the universe, um, the Big Bang, um, the idea that um, something that doesn't come from nothing. And I found that very challenging philosophically because we don't know what came before it, but also, that can also be said that we don't know if there was another universe that collapsed back in on itself and stuff like that. Before, Matt's, Matt, I already know, is going to take the, the actual topic very well, and he does. I want to just ask the question that I'd asked at the end of your other one before Matt does. Because you just said, we don't know what came before, so why take a position on it? That was the question on the last one. We don't know what came before. So why decide it was a deistic God? That's fair. Matt, if, if, now if you want yeah, to go I with mean, it, because Matt, uh, Matt can also point out the argument, how bad that argument is better than I can. But I just wanted to get the question off. I, I don't know that it's uh, necessary um, to add much to that. I like your thing about the concept of nothing and comparing what nothing do you even know of, comparing the... That was the step I had in mind when I was saying you should handle that argument part, but uh, totally up to you. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot to potentially go, but if he's already satisfied with, you know, hey, why, why take a position on something you can't demonstrate, then let's move on to number three, because that was easy. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the third one was going to be the abiogenesis, that we don't know where life came from, but that is also answered 
in the same in a similar manner. So I'm not even going to bother with that one. Um, yep. Uh, and then I guess the fourth one would be not morality. Actually, Zachary, based real quick, like, because real, I believe that some. Real quick, Zachary, I, I do want to interject. You should know that yeah. scientists aren't generally perplexed by abiogenesis. While they don't have an answer for it, it is not. If you actually go and, and talk to biologists and stuff, they don't find it remotely challenging to go. Obviously, it was a natural cause. Here are here are elements of what status the uh the world was in and the timing of when life first aroused uh, arised versus when it could have arised here are the products that you need to make it happen and so while in a lab we can't say that any of the ways we've so far demonstrated a uh using chemistry to uh create some sort of self-replicating molecule because there have been some uh, but that any one of these was the first way that that happened uh and we will probably be more confident later you should also know that the abiogenesis problem is purely religious. It's one of those problems where if you know enough about the topic at hand, you know enough about biology, you know enough about even evolution, you sit there and go, sure, we don't have the answer here, but this looks far from the unsolvable type of problems. Where there are others like the what came before the Big Bang, that's the one that seems like it might not be possible. Maybe we'll never know the answer to a biogenesis, it's unlikely that that one is one that will escape us forever. Just wanted okay. to point that out. But still, it's still in the, yeah, hey, if the, answer is we if the answer is we don't know, then yeah. we don't know. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Um, the fourth one was just the idea that there is there seems to be a foundational morality in um, human beings in the fact that there are constants across all cultures. They may differ amongst cultures and whatnot, like some, um, uh, such as like murder. What about it? That's murder, by the way, murder, right. by the way, is a legal murder, by the way, is a legal concept that, that specifically addresses unjust killing. Um, when it comes to just killing, there are, across many cultures, differences in when killing is and is not justified. And not only that, but at the individual yeah. level, there's some people who don't seem to have any problem at all with killing. And so it's not like there's a true uh, universal uh, objective fact of this. What there are are societal norms. And the, it's completely unsurprising to me that most people who would like to keep living, most people live, most people would like to keep living. Very few people are in favor of being killed. And so most people would generally oppose circumstances under which they would be killed. So why would we need any foundation beyond, I'd rather not be killed, so it's in my best interest to work together with the other people who don't want to be killed to encourage that mindset. Uh, outside of that, I don't know what you can point to. All right. Well, I suppose that there is no reason for me to necessarily believe that there is a God because there's no evidence for it. And your arguments sound a hell of a lot more sound than mine. So I and, uh, and if you come up with appreciate the if you come up you with the time. Yeah, and if you come up with arguments and evidence um, that are better, call back because if it turns out there is a God, well, the deistic God is a useless proposition. Hey, it's you're claiming to detect the undetectable is a big problem. But if it turns out there's some other God and we have good reason for it and good arguments for it, I'm on board. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a way the deistic God could be like, Hey, we looked back through a telescope. We physically saw him at work, you know, 800 billion years ago, uh, uh, a much, much longer than the universe has actually existed. Uh, somehow our telescope reached further, but okay. But even, even within the universe, 12 billion years ago, we saw him, he was still doing some stuff and then he teleported away. Uh, I guess that's like the closest I could come with. There's not really a way to actually honestly <laughs> take the deistic position, except to go, I'm a deist because I'm uncomfortable telling people I'm an atheist. That's like the most honest and version of deism I've ever heard. 
And I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I was deeply uncomfortable with the idea because I'd only left Christianity a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. That there is no God or anything that started things. So it was a, a pretty emotional standpoint. So yeah. I just really but appreciate can... the fact that you guys gave me the arguments. Thank you. I, I'm an atheist and I'm not comfortable with the notion that all of this happened without any guidance. Um, but that's the way the evidence points and there's no evidence pointing another direction um, th that is that would justify holding that conclusion. And so um, my, my discomfort with things, my discomfort with not living forever and not, you know, not knowing the answers to why is there something rather than nothing? Why is there a universe at all? All of those things are uncomfortable being in this position of not knowing. Um, and that's just something that you got to get comfortable with because the number of things that you don't know is staggering. Yeah. And if you then just accept some <laughs> unfounded assertion to ease your discomfort with not knowing, you have abandoned everything about truth because what you've decided to say, and not just you, anybody does it, is that your comfort is more important than the truth. And that that's a dangerous path. Yeah. Last bit of advice for you, Zachary, because of the specific phase you're in, I would definitely recommend uh, Dying Out Loud. It's our show every Tuesday. Dave Warnock's the host. You can find a playlist with it. But those types of concepts, the the things of finding purpose and meaning and how to how to grab life by the cojones, uh, how to move <laughs> on from, uh, you know, prescribed purpose, from move on from prescribed purpose into a self-chosen purpose. That's often the theme of that show. And then we'll be launching new shows and new channels actually in the future that will also focus a little bit more heavily on people who are in that deconstruction phase. So look out for that. But dying out loud in the meantime would be good for you, I think. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Zachary. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and the rumors are true. Forrest Valkai is, in fact, a hostage in my basement. If you would like to contribute to his freedom one day, you can do so by supporting us over on Patreon or becoming a channel member. There are specific tiers for specific shows or the channel at large. You can also send a super thanks. Those are great. You can like, comment, and subscribe. Also, fudge the algorithm. Go to one of these things. The algorithm doesn't matter. It thinks it knows you better than we do. Better than you do? I know you better, Hank. There's a bunch of people named Hank. I just freaked way out. Okay, go to one of these.